There's loads and loads of texture, loads of flavour, lots of contrast. I love it. It was rubbish and that's why I demolished the entire plate in 30 seconds flat. I'm doing a pan-fried sea bass in five spice on a sweet potato puree with figs, spring onions and flaked almonds. You're doing fish with the figs. Um, and so what are you doing with the peaches? Cardamom and rose water rice pudding with poached peaches. I think this may be the only time when I've seen a contestant's main course be sweeter than its pudding. <laughs> well, I'm here to be a little bit different. Hopefully um, it's impressing being different. Or it could be... Horrifically wrong, I know. We put Holly through here because we said she had a great palate and she's now about to challenge that by serving up sea bass and figs. It is a very dangerous game. You've got to stand out from the other contestants and I'm hoping that this is how I'm going to do it. I've done barbecues for large numbers of people. I've done dinner parties for 12 people with five, six courses. So doing two courses for four people shouldn't be that intimidating. However, I haven't been cooking for the level of people that I'm cooking for today. Robert? Yes? What are you going to cook for us? It's going to be rabbit livers on pom puree with a pancetta crispy slice and onion, tarragon and masala gravy. What are you making here? This is going to be a trio of profiteroles with three different toppings and three different fillings. Now, we know you like to chuck lots of things at plates. Well, you know, I don't think this is throwing lots of things at plates. This is, this is you know, quite a simplified menu. <laughs> <laughs> a liver and onion simplified, served with profiteroles three different ways with three different fillings. Absolutely. That's simplified? Well, no, the dessert is not that simple. Do you want to stay in the competition, Rob? Absolutely. That's why I think this is the menu to do it. I think Bob's dessert is really inventive because it's actually showing skill. And I think the fact of actually doing three different fillings is good. I think this is a seriously nerve-wracking stage of the competition. If I was a contestant right now, I would not want to be cooking for MasterChef champions. Tina Myers was MasterChef's first ever champion. Gosh, I can cook. Almost a decade on, she's just opened the 11th branch of her restaurant in London. When we first opened, we were pretty green to say the least. We knew nothing. Didn't sleep at all, lost loads of weight. We were just working our butts off. It was terrifying, exhilarating, incredible. But the whole experience of doing MasterChef it stood me in really good stead. That gave me huge confidence. All this started in that studio in that first day without MasterChef. Who knows where I'd be now, but it's definitely put me on an incredible journey that I'm still on. After winning the title in 2008, criminal barrister James Nathan gave up his career to work in other people's kitchens. Last year, he opened his first restaurant. It was time to do something for myself. It's great to feel that actually I've arrived. The Eagle has landed, I've got a restaurant. If I put my hand on my heart, I think there's been some quite dark moments. It's not a well-paid profession and it's very long hours, it's very grueling. But being a criminal barrister, you never made anyone happy. And for me, cooking is making people happy. 2010 finalist Alex Rushmer opened a restaurant with his friend, Chef Ben Moore, just a year after the competition ended. We opened and that first three or four months was the swiftest learning curve you can possibly imagine. We had to learn everything. I didn't have a day off for seven, eight months. It was insane and mad, but huge amounts of fun. Almost immediately, their food began to receive critical acclaim. I opened my second restaurant this year. You should be under no illusions that it's an easy ride. Even as a MasterChef finalist, that brought people through the door 
what's my job is to make sure they come back. You have actually got 17 minutes, okay? You happy? Yeah. Can you show us that? That's it. <laughs> so Holly's main course, pan fried fillet of sea bass with sweet potato puree, figs and fry spice. It's just sounding really sweet. I love sweet potato, I love figs. I'm just not sure if I'm going to love it with a piece of sea bass. Don't blame the bass. Let it cook. Because the more you muck around with the fish, the more likely it is to fall apart. Yep. doing really well. You've got about two minutes left. Thank you. Good job, you. Right on time. I can't carry them all. I've done a pan-fried sea bass fillet on a sweet potato puree with figs, spring onions and flaked almonds and a little drizzle of balsamic syrup. Hope you enjoy it. It looks absolutely beautiful. I literally want to stick my head in it and eat it. It smells amazing. It really does. This is a really delightful dish to eat. The figs looks beautiful on the plate. It tastes great. Contrary to what we thought, everything here sits in perfect harmony. Everything's really well cooked. It's very well balanced. There's loads and loads of texture, loads of flavour, lots of contrast. I love it. It was rubbish, and that's why I demolished the entire plate in 30 seconds flat. The fig? I really don't like it with the fish, I'm sorry. If you just take the fig away, that's a very decent and accomplished sea bass dish. Dessert to go. What are we going to do for your dessert? Poach my peaches. So for dessert, Holly's doing as a cardamom rice pudding with poached peach, rose water and crushed pistachios. It sounds like a dreamy dessert. It's got a floral thing going on, but if it's badly done, it tastes like a mouthful of potpourri, I always find, which is a, which is, which is a crime. Keep on stirring that. What's going to happen to the rice? It's going to get horrible. Oh, you've got to do something, don't you, Holly? Yeah. You've always got to do something. You can always wash the dishes if you need something to do. <laughs> I do enough of that at home. Make sure you've got no fingerprints or anything. Make it all yeah. shiny. You've got lovely little blingy bits in the middle. Make it as bling as possible. Don't drop it. Please don't drop it. I've done a rice pudding for you with rose water and cardamom. I've poached the peaches and then it's got pistachios and edible rose petals on top. You just want to dive into it. It's like a wafting pillow of loveliness. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just great. The rice is slightly undercooked, so it's slightly crunchy, but the crunch of pistachio is delicious with it, and the vanilla just comes through from that rice pudding. I love this. I think it's really, really good. The rice is al dente, but I really like that. I think the smell was phenomenal, and I, and I, and I think the, 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 the flavour was too strong, so it, it, it doesn't eat as well as it smells. The rose petals on that warm rice pudding are making the whole thing smell like a rose garden. It's lovely. The issue for me is the rice is undercooked. She's got a great palate, but she's got a few techniques to sort out. This is how I cook at home. I just hope they like it as much as I do.